So let's try another example of a circle model I might ask you to draw. 4MGF2. Now, once again, my advice for drawing these is to cover the coefficient with your hand, draw the molecule that it asks you to do, and then make the number of copies that the coefficient tells you to have. So in this case, let's cover the coefficient with our hand. We have MGF2. That means our molecule has one magnesium atom and two fluorine atoms. You know, you have to remember that these subscripts only apply to the element before them, right? So this two here, that subscript, means you have two fluorines, but not two of the magnesiums, right? Subscripts only apply to the element before them. So this would be MGF2, right? One magnesium with two fluorine atoms. Then we uncover the coefficient. That coefficient is a four, which says take this molecule, MGF2, and get four sets of it, four copies. So we'll do that. One, two, three, four. And there we have it, 4MGF2. Now here's an example I have that's very tricky that I put in the notes. 2N versus N2. What makes this very difficult for many students is they say, I don't know what to do with the two. And in order to make this a little bit more clear, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in the understood numbers. So for instance, uh, 2N, there isn't a subscript. Well, if there isn't one, it is understood that that means there's only one of them. So this would mean two sets of N1. And then over here, N2, well, there isn't a coefficient. And if there isn't a coefficient, it's understood to be a one. Just like in math class, if the teacher writes X on the board, it's understood that there's only one X and not two or three of them, right? Because if there was more than one, the teacher would have to say. So when we draw these, this is how it would look. Two and one means you draw a single nitrogen, right? We cover that with our hand, a single nitrogen atom, and then we make two copies of it. On the other hand, for N2, right, we cover the coefficient, we draw N2, which is two nitrogens together, and then we have only one copy of it. You notice that one thing that's very similar about these is that they have two nitrogen atoms. But whether those nitrogen atoms are separate or together can make a big difference in your circle models, especially when we start representing chemical equations later. So here's one more example. Um, the hardest ones of all for many students to draw are ones with those polyatomic compounds where you have these parentheses in there. And I know that sometimes students look at that and say, man, Mr. Missouri, you must hate us. No, I don't. But I do want to show you how to draw circle models for ones like this. This is about as complicated as they can get. Once again, my advice is to cover the coefficient and then draw the molecule we have here. Now, as we learned earlier in this class, when you have parentheses in a subscript after that, this subscript, in this case, is two, says you have two groups, whatever's in the inside. In this case, we have one lead atom bonded to two groups, with each group having a sulfur and four oxygens. So if we draw a circle model for that, it should look something like this, right? We have one lead, right? And then for our groups, we have a group of SO4, so that's S O O O O, right? An S and four O's. And then this two here means we have two whatever's inside the parentheses, two groups of that. And this is all one giant molecule. That's sort of a mess, but maybe with practice, you'll find that it's so easy to understand. Now, so that's how we draw a molecule with a polyatomic ion. But then there's that annoying little coefficient I covered up, a three. Well, Remember, the coefficient in front tells you how many copies to make. We made one copy of PbSO4 too. Well, we need to have three copies of it. So that means we've got to take that same molecule and copy the exact same thing until we have a total of three copies. And that's how it looks with polyatomic compounds. Now let's try one more here. I'm gonna leave this up. Take, uh, why don't you try it on your own? Pause the video, take a couple seconds, see if you can draw it, and then see if your answer matches what I have. Alrighty, well, let's give it a shot.
So I'm going to cover the coefficient with my hand and say, let's just see the molecule we have to draw. AlNO3,3. So let's see, we've got one aluminum atom in this molecule, and then we have three polyatomic ions. Each polyatomic ion has a nitrogen and three oxygens together with it. So your molecule should look something like this. We have an Al. Here's our first group of NO3, our second group of NO3, and our third group of NO3. Remember, this subscript here tells you how many of those polyatomic ions you need in the compound. And this is all one giant molecule. So you have to make sure that your circles are connected. Well, so that's AlNO3,3. And then there's that annoying little coefficient. What does that big three in front mean? It means you need three copies of that molecule. Redo one of those molecules. So in order to make it all work, we have to make two more copies. So that would be three AlNO3,3. We've got three copies of that same molecule all together. Hopefully this helps you understand how to draw circle models when you have coefficients. Thanks and have a great day.